Hello everyone, welcome to the second video in the series with Sitis. So he did his master's in India and then moved to Switzerland to do a PhD and now currently he's doing postdoc in NTNU Norway. So this video will be focused about his experience of doing a postdoc research in NTNU Norway. So I will start with the first question. So I see from LinkedIn that you did few years postdoc in Switzerland before moving to NTNU for postdoc. So yeah. was it like intentional that you made the switch or was it like something you got which you really liked or like what was the reason? Like, uh, I mean, mainly my curiosity is uh, why did you choose to do another postdoc? Was it like your deeper interest in research or was it meant to solve some other purpose or something like that? What is your thought process like? Uh, so it was both uh, like um, I wanted to move move out of Switzerland uh, because I spent too many years anyways there and um, um, it's very difficult to get uh, in at least in Europe I still don't want to leave uh, Europe at least uh, at least not to US um, or, or UK if I get a job in India I will go back but um, the thing is um, the thing was like uh, three years ago that um, it was very difficult for European PhDs to get um, a tenure track in Europe with only two years of postdoc. Like the norm is getting towards three, four years by default. Like even then, like three years ago, it was the norm was getting towards three, four years. And now it's even like more four or five years uh, of postdoc before you, you are accepted. Like you keep applying, but you keep getting rejections um, because, you know, they always find somebody who has more postdoc experience, like postdoctoral experience than you. Um, so, um, that was one reason to do, to start a second postdoc for sure, because, you know, I did not have enough postdoc credits. <laughs> um, so the idea was to see, okay, like either stay in, uh, because I was working at EPFL as a PhD, as, as, as everybody knows now, and then, <laughs> um, I could only do two years of postdoc at EPFL because the limit is six years for a non-permanent job. So they kicked me out, of course. Uh, and then um, I had another postdoc um, in, in University of Lausanne in, in department of uh, in, in the faculty of business and economics, where I was working with uh, some mathematicians there. And uh, there I had longer contract, but then, you know, uh, my main motivation was to have some affiliation with the EPFL and when it stopped, I was like, okay, this is my time. This is my cue to leave Switzerland and go somewhere else. Um, I started looking around again, uh, Germany, Netherlands, uh, Scandinavian countries, and I found um, a very nice project where I could do eye tracking with kids and I could do this uh, multimodal learning analytics um with with adults and kids both uh, and i always always wanted to do eye tracking with kids because i never got a chance to do that in my phd and said yeah why not i go there uh, in, in to norway it's not a bad country um well it's it's uh, one of the best countries to live in and uh, i came here so okay that, that was the whole story in in two minutes okay so i heard that yeah so you mentioned in the beginning that to get a tenure track, you need minimum three or five years of postdoc. Oh, it keeps changing. Like when I started my PhD, it was like, hey, you do a PhD, you do a two year postdoc, you will, you will end up in a tenure track. Uh, then towards end of my PhD, it was like, hey, you need to have at least uh, two to four years of postdoc. Now, I now these days I'm hearing that Hey, it's like five years of postdoc, so it, it keeps changing, and I'm sure at some point of time it will go down again. Uh, it's just like like now, for example now uh, because of COVID, every hiring has been frozen, so um, like um, we don't know when it will open again. So there is uh, like maybe eternal postdoc or something. But uh, yeah, that's the like it it keeps changing. This like for example in in US, it's very easy to get a tenure track because you spent a lot of time you doing your PhD, like the average is six, six and a half years in our fields. So, and that translated very well in Europe uh, when I started my PhD that, hey, you did your PhD in four years um, to match 
the PhD is from US, you are still, you know, two and a half years less on experience, so do that. But now, yeah, it's it's uh, more. It seems more. Uh, yeah, so how was your experience like, uh, just like you mentioned in the previous video that you applied for PhD following these guidelines and application requirements and like this. So for the postdoc, is it more like based on your profile publications or what actually one should know when they apply for a postdoc after the PhD? Like what are the basic minimum that you should have in a PhD to be successful in maybe multiple postdocs or like Oh, I think publications are now getting more and more important uh, because the competition is not getting any lower, right? So um, the the idea is to see what kind of uh, work do you want to do, what kind of uh, teaching, because now now it's the time to build up your teaching uh, profile as well. Um, so you want to choose um, um, a place where there is a balance between your research and uh, teaching profile. Uh, depending on you, basically, it, it, it totally depends on you if you want uh, half and half teaching or one third teaching and uh, two thirds research or even less for teaching. Um, and then um, the, the idea would be to, you know, uh, seek out because hopefully during the PhD, you have made a lot of connections by going to the conferences uh, and, and uh, writing papers and hopefully your, your supervisors will put you, you know, in contact with different people. So you have your own uh, small sort of uh, research network that you can contact. And basically that's what I did for all my postdocs. Like uh, um, I always uh, got uh, another job in, 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 in this uh, network of mine. So okay. yeah, yeah. Postdoc is, is mostly about networking I, in my experience because it will be very difficult if you don't know anybody who will give you uh, a postdoc, unless uh, you have done something incredible uh, during okay. your PhD and, and, and everybody wants you, then, then it's easy and good for you if you have that. <laughs> okay. So you mentioned that you can choose in a postdoc in most places, like how much teaching and how much research you want to do. So if I am not wrong, then is it like, can one can someone choose like hundred uh, percent research and zero teaching? Is it yes. acceptable in universities or? Yes, yes, yeah. There are pure researcher postdocs, as pure research based postdocs as well. Uh, it depends on uh, the kind of grant that is paying you, uh, because uh, so I, I didn't uh, want to hint that you can negotiate it. I don't think many postdoc positions in Europe are negotiable. Uh, they are what they are. So when I said that you can choose between, you know, X percent of teaching and 100 minus X percent of, uh, of, of research, that meant like there are a very variety of options available uh, in, in Europe when it comes to postdocs. So you can choose between different places, but on one place, I think you have to deal with what it is. Okay. So I don't think any postdoc is negotiable. Like it, it is what it is because the person has written that the professor has written the yeah. grant and he has asked for certain kind of money. He has cut some deals with university that, hey, I have only a 66% postdoc. So I will put him to teach one third of his time. And then, yeah. Okay. The only negotiations you can do in postdocs is after you get in. <laughs> like, okay. hey, this semester I'm writing more papers. So maybe I will teach a little bit less. And then next semester you... Uh, or, or during the end of the semester, you uh, kind of help with correcting some exams. So a few hundred hours you go there. So, yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I don't know if I should ask this question, but is the salary that you get in a postdoc comparable to people if they work in a, like maybe after PhD, if someone chooses to work in R&D in any company or in a software job, then how comparable are both the salaries like uh, oh no 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 they are not comparable okay in industry you get way more than a postdoc well again it depends on the profile of your uh, of, of your job that you get in industry but um, i think i think the the um, the main idea of doing a postdoc is really have to do with your motivation like i always wanted to be a professor mm -hmm. so um, that's why I'm a postdoc now. Uh, so, so uh, mostly it's like if you want to be in academia, then I think it is highly recommended that you should go for a 
uh, postdoc after your PhD so that you can continue your career in academia maybe soon or later like Yes, yeah, that's the idea. Because also, you know, like you get used to working in a certain kind of environment and uh, it, during your postdoc, because I think if a PhD wants to go to industry, he or she can still go to industry without any problem. But I don't see myself in an industry anymore after doing five years of my postdoc, almost five years of postdoc, because I have been uh, working in a certain style. I have been working in a certain, uh, you know, uh, size of team, uh, certain... Um, routines Projects. that I have, yeah. certain processes that now uh, I have perfected them, uh, working like five years as a postdoc, certain things that I don't like, uh, like I have more strong likes and dislikes now than uh, when I started as a PhD. And I think it will be very difficult if I have to move. I'm not saying that the industry door closes on you as soon as you are in postdoc, but it becomes, that the transfer becomes more difficult with time. Um, it's still like if you do a one year postdoc or a two year postdoc, the industry door is all like the industry door is always open. There is no point of saying that you can never transfer to, to industry or back. Like it, it's, a, it's a two way street. Um, but yeah, as far as money is concerned, there is no comparison. Okay. So how much is the roughly the range of the monthly salary that you can expect in Norway if you are a postdoc? after tax per month you can again get hand. around 3000 euros okay and uh, like the point you mentioned before so what would you say in one line like who should not apply for a postdoc after a phd like uh, oh so if if you are not motivated to continue in academics don't apply for a postdoc like postdoc is not a uh, like don't take postdoc as a as a buffer job you will suffer a lot okay so if you want to continue in academics and uh, like at least right after finishing your phd because you know people change people evolve so it's not that uh, i say that hey you go to postdoc you have to be a professor i'm not saying it but you know at least when you finish your phd and you have some aspirations of academic life uh, then go for a postdoc. If you have zero aspiration for academic life right after a PhD, good for you. Actually, it's the right way to, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's a very good, um, uh, clarity of mind is a very good thing. So if you don't want to continue in academics, go out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that's just very straightforward advice. So what do you like and dislike the most about doing the postdoc? So uh, before the question, uh, when did you start the postdoc in Norway? In which year? I started um, in 2018, January 2018. Okay. So yeah. it's like two and a half years almost. Almost two and a half years, yeah. And before that, you had two years in Switzerland. Almost two years, yeah. Okay, so yeah, now back to the question, like what do you like and dislike the most about doing a postdoc? Oh, I like that there is no deadline, right? Like in, in, in a PhD, you always have, hey, you have like a four year deadline or a five year deadline or whatever your supervisor sets it, right? And, and you always have to work towards that. Like whatever you do in your PhD, you are always working towards that, you know, red line. Uh, that, hey, I have to finish my PhD. That goes away, and that's a big relief. Like, um, and then um, you get some cred, like you get some street credits. Once you have, <laughs> once you have your, done your PhD, you have better, more street credit, I would say. Uh, but the, the idea is, um, th that's what I like, that there is no, um, not working towards one particular goal. Is, is, is the best thing for me as a postdoc. Uh, I can work on as many projects as I want. I can drop whatever I want, whenever I want, and uh, work on multiple projects at the same time, uh, get some time to teach, because I like teaching, so I also get some time to teach. And uh, usually PhDs are not supposed to hold uh, lectures, so I, I did at EPFL. Uh, NTNU PhDs cannot uh, uh, give lectures. So um, it was very nice that I, I came to NTNU as a postdoc because I can give lectures and I love giving lectures. Okay. So, so that's the thing that I get to teach. Okay. 
so what is your postdoc research about in brief so it's it's still in the technology and has learning like kind of domain but now instead of now not instead of but now besides eye tracking i also put a lot more sensors on people so i put uh, eeg caps on them i put uh, uh, heart rate monitors on them i put electrodermal activity monitors on them and um, i put a camera on their screens to see how how they are emoting and um, so there is a small upcoming field called multimodal learning analytics where i would position my work these days so like how we can get more holistic understanding of uh, learners using these multiple data sources and how we can start again the the basic philosophy is the same that how we can learn uh, from good uh, students what they do different than poor students and teach poor students in a, in a better manner so again giving feedback is is the the philosophy still okay so forgetting the covid situation for some time uh, what are the possibilities if someone works to work in the similar field and maybe from anywhere in the world they want to apply for phd in your research group that you work in ntnu so are there like any uh, like how do they approach like is there is it like via the university or they can just email someone okay i'm hey i'm interested in this uh, work you are doing let me know when you have a funding or have a position or like how can they uh, get some information or maybe expect to get a phd position after one year or two year or have, be in touch with you because they are also interested in that similar field yeah so there are there is this job norge uh, website which has all the positions in 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 norway like uh, most of the norwegian companies or not not norwegian companies but norwegian institutions post their openings on this job norge it's one of the regulations that you have to post there so if you search for ntn new phd you will get all the list um uh, list of open phd positions so it's very easy to find the phd positions in in norway like find not get okay oh, yeah, hopefully okay. get hopefully get so yeah thank you very much for giving your time for the interview to share your postdoc experience in norway and in the next video which will be probably a short video where we'll discuss very briefly like their cost of living in norway what is their experience of stay for 2.5 years so stay tuned for the next video don't forget to smash the like button share this video among all your friends and peers subscribe to the channel if you have not subscribed yet and thank you shitis again for giving your time on a weekend see you in upcoming vlogs bye thank you